You know, you can't call the Flyers of the mid 1980s a dynasty, but when you make two Stanley Cup finals in three years, you you got to be really good. Now, the squad had numerous role players on the side, and this request comes from our good friend Bo Sheaves, who's like to single out this player. Uh, the the idea about Lindsey Carson. Uh, you got to be uh, tough when you come through the Saskatchewan and the Billings program in the late 70s and early 80s. Now, born in Oxbow, Saskatchewan, big drink of water, the center was 6'2", 195. He eventually had a strong NHL career, playing seven seasons in the NHL with the Flyers and the Whalers. Now, he did grow up uh, up in North Battleford. If you know North Battleford, Saskatchewan, some of the toughest farm athletes, what I call farm athletes, they're, they're strong out there. You know, when a, a person got to work a 14-hour shift from 5 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night, that's what makes them strong there. Now, he first broke in with the Battleford Barons of the SJHL with 70 points in 59 games, including 31 goals in the 77 campaign. 78, Saskatoon Blades, one of the better WHL teams of their era, he put up 78 points in 62 games. Now, his draft year, he was taken 56 overall by the Flyers in 79. That year, he played with Saskatoon and Billings. He ended up with 67 games, 34 goals, 51 assists for 85 points, and 11 points in 8 games in the playoffs. Now, with Billings, he became a really strong hometown hero, and that doubled over the next year. He had probably one of the better seasons in Billings' Bing Horde's history, with 108 points in 70 regular season games, 42 goals, and uh, 9 points in the playoffs. Not the dirtiest player on the ice, but he wouldn't back down. Now, he was sent to all plays Saginaw, Michigan, for some seasoning in 1981. And we've done previous podcasts on Saginaw's grade 81 squad. That is the year that he won the Turner Cup. 36 points in the regular season, 79 goals, including 11 assists, and 16 points in 20 uh, playoff games. Now, that Saginaw Gear squad probably one of the best IHL teams of all time. He learned defense, he learned offense, he had some strong uh, teammates. Now, the next season, he got his breakthrough with the Flyers with one assist in 18 games, but here's not the story. He went to probably the second best AHL franchise of the decade, the Flyers affiliate in Maine. And with the Mariners, again, he became a, a province-wide hero. 51 points in 54, province-wide, statewide. 51 points in 54 games, including 20 goals. His rookie campaign in 1983 with Philadelphia showed great promise. Promise 37 points in 78 games, including 18 goals. He had some seizing in Spring Hill, Springfield the next year with uh, six points in five games. But a lost season, he only played 16 games. Now, 85, we knew that the Flyers had a good lineup to maybe go for a quarterfinal and semifinal run. And sure, that's what happened. That year, the Flyers got all the way to Stanley Cup Finals to take on the, the Gretzky Oilers. Unfortunately, despite Lindsay's uh, first, 20, first and only 20-goal season and three assists in 17 playoff games as kind of a second and third line forward, it didn't work out and the Flyers were defeated by the Oilers uh, quite handily. Now, 86, injury played again. He only played 21 games. But in 87, the Flyers were back in it. He knocked off Montreal in the semifinals in a slight upset and uh, took on the Oilers in the finals. Trail four or three games to one, uh, but eventually came back and uh, pushed into game seven, losing 3-1. Now this year, uh, Lindsay had 26 points in 71 playoff games, 71 regular season games, 8 points in 24 playoff games. Put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, 24 playoff games over four series is uh, on average six games. So each game was tight, each game was hard fought. They, they struggled. But in the 88, for some reason, the Flyers. Uh, Wanted to pass on him. He only had two goals in 36 games. Found himself in the Hartford program for the second half of the season. Did play in the playoffs for Hartford uh, in their one of their last key runs of the 1980s. 89, he decided to try to rebirth his career in the minors, but it didn't. Uh, it didn't work out. Now, 
We talk about some of the injuries he had. The 84 season, it was a bummer. He had broke his left arm by, of all people, Bob Nystrom, not known for being a dirty player, but he was checked very uh, heavily uh, by the uh, Stanley Cup hero in uh, the October 15 injury game uh, versus the Islanders. Now, he also uh, broke a bone in his left hand uh, and uh, lost a few games in 86. Now, 88 was injury played again. Back spasms uh, really, uh, really worked on him. Now, when he made it to the playoffs, uh, I saw this line play, and I would like to see them play a lot longer. The great Kevin Dineen and Ron Francis were playing on the same line, and the 88 playoffs, even though it was five games, they showed a lot of promise. Now, the Whalers passed on him on June 8, 89, after they bought out his contract. Now, he, in the, like I said, injury plague uh, was a big part of it. Uh, injured jaw in the 89, and also an injured shoulder, which again cut, cut, he cut his efficiency. Now, um, a very uh, cerebral guy, he worked with a financial planning firm in Philadelphia during the offseason, his playing days. Now, uh, the Philadelphia trade to Hartford, not saying uh, they, they dumped him, but Paul Lawless was an okay player, but it wasn't much for somebody of Lindsay's uh, talent. Now, according to published reports, he's an avid hunter and fisher. Uh, I guess the key player, the key uh, places in Canada states he likes to go include uh, North Glassland, Saskatchewan, Jasper National Park, Billings, Montana. I've been to Montana. Billings, uh, Allen uh, Zone, beautiful. And, of course, who, who cannot love Portland, Maine? If you've ever been to Portland, ladies and gentlemen, it's got everything for everybody. Uh, you know, nightlife uh, is within 30 minutes of great fishing and hunting, all kind of different stuff. If you want to take a vacation, uh, I love Portland, I love Bangor, I love all of Maine. Just that when you go more north to my stomping grounds in Prescott Island, Holton, if you can deal with minus 40 near the local Irving station in January, if that's your thrill, go for it. So, Lindsey Carson was also interviewed in Hockey Night in Canada, I think when he, he second or third season with the Flyers. And he said, you know, uh, you played with Billings, you played in Saginaw. He, the, the announcer basically asked him, he said, you know, uh, playing with Saginaw and Maine, what does that give you as a player? Well, he said, I played for some very strong teammates, and it... And it uh, it taught me how to excel. So he won a Turner Cup and two Stanley Cup finals within six or seven years. you got to be good. You can't just do it by yourself. But why do you remember about Lindsey Carson? Uh, some, of the <laughs> some of the enforcers in the NHL try to push him around. I remember a fight, I think it was his third or fourth season, where basically he, he threw a left hand. I think it, actually, I think it was 80, 80, 84? Or 83. Anyway, he threw a left hand. It might have been one of the Toronto Maple Leafs part time goons. There was a, no, it didn't end well for the other player. But uh, Lindsay, I, th I think in 85, they had that team to win the Stanley Cup. But you got to understand, you're going against Curry and Anderson and Messi and Gretzky in their prime with Fuhrer and Moog. You know, uh, not to sound weird, the Flyers were the second best team in the NHL for the mid 1980s, and he got no Stanley Cup to uh, prove it just like Boston was in the late 70s against Montreal, just arguably the North Stars were in the early 80s against the uh, against the Islanders. You know, hockey is strange. Sometimes the better teams win sometimes, but the better teams, uh, you know, lose. You look at Boston, uh, there's Stanley Cup appearances. But, uh, you know, it was fun watching the, uh, the mid-1980 Flyers because he had more skill on the third and fourth line than, uh, than the Wild Street Bullies of the 70s. But you can almost see the ghosts of Terry Crisp and Selesky and Goodenough and McLarge and Bladen in these young, what I call the young flyers. The media used to call them the young flyers, going from like 82 to about, again, 87, 89. Uh, you know, Timmy Kerr, Prop, you know, a very well-respected team. And the Flyer fans of the modern era started with that 1980s Flyers. They're, they're not old enough to remember the Bobby Clark Flyers. Technically, that was, you know, 50 years ago. You see a Flyers fan in 2021, for sure they owe a lot as an 8-year-old or 10-year-old watching Flyers games uh, in the playoffs announced by Bob Cole or, you know, uh, Jim Houston or whoever it was. You know, the, the Flyers in New Brunswick, they're a number three or four team. And on most days, they're number two because the Leafs let them down. 
Fire fans are not Leafs fans, by the way. That's a little inside joke. So that's a legend of Lindsay Carson. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, uh, Bo Sheaves uh, gives great requests. We love your requests. If I can do it, and if I know a little bit of background that's not known, I'm going to pass it on. But all I know there, Lindsay, Lindsay Carson, uh, you know, should have played with a Canadian team because... Uh, like Vancouver or Winnipeg or Calgary, it would have been tremendous. Because, you know, we had that Saskatchewan, you know, uh, battle, battle tough. My God, he came from Battleford. Come on, what else can I say? Thanks for listening. Have a good evening. And don't forget, Canadian election, countdown's coming. Bye.